This is a guide on repairing the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium PTH651 pen tablet by hardwiring the USB connection directly into the board. The design flaw of this tablet, and many Wacom tablets, is that the USB connection is too easily manipulated and puts a lot of stress onto the connection, ultimately causing it to break or intermittently disconnect. If you're watching this video, I assume that you've already run into this problem. However, if you haven't, and you own one of these tablets, I highly recommend you utilize the wireless kit that the Intuos Medium comes with to minimize the amount of time that it spends connected to the USB and therefore reduces the stress being put onto the connection. In order to disassemble the tablet, there are four screws, two hidden underneath the rubber foot pads of the tablet, one hidden underneath the cover plate for the battery, and one hidden underneath the cover plate for the wireless transmitter. Once the cover plates are removed, you will have to run some kind of thin tool, such as a screwdriver or ideally a plastic lever, around the seam of the edge in order to disconnect the two halves from the clips that are on either side. It can often feel like you may break these clips, but as long as you apply gentle and even pressure, they should be okay. If they do break, this is unfortunate, but uh, the tablet can still be reassembled without them. It may just be a little bit loose. It is important to make sure that when you are removing the two halves of the tablet, that you have the tablet flipped upside down with the drawing surface facing the table. The reason for this is that the uh, circuit boards inside are not held down uh, particularly tightly and they are connected to each other using these connector ribbons and they may come loose. If they do come loose you can reattach them but they can be a little bit finicky and you may have to look up a guide on how to operate the locking mechanism that holds them in place. Once you do have the tablet open the area that you're going to be working on is here, where you can see the USB connection in between the battery, power input, and the wireless transmitter's standard USB connection. At this point, I would like to reiterate that this guide assumes that you want to bypass the broken USB. The reason that I was doing this repair is that my USB was physically damaged and completely loose. Keeping that in consideration, you may have to desolder yours to remove it. Regardless if the USB connection is loose or is still partially attached to the board, it is also held in place with this thin metal retainer, which can simply be slid out and removed. In theory, you do not actually have to remove the connector. However, leaving the connector in will block any channel for the wires to exit the device, and it may lead to problems. Before you can solder the connection, you will of course have to strip the USB cable. Inside of the USB cable, you will find five components. First, you will find a metal braid, which can be cut off and is simply there for adding strength to the cable. And you will find four colored wires. These wires are black for ground, red for power in, green for data in, and white for data out. The area of the board that you will be soldering is here, just above where the USB connector was, and to the left or right of the connector. And you will be soldering them as shown here, with the first connector, that is a 10 ohm resistor, being wired with power in, followed by the next one with white, on the bottom, green on the left hand side, and ground can be anywhere on either of the two pads to the left or right. As I've mentioned before, I am not an engineer and I have no prior experience with soldering. As such, I did a great deal of damage to my board in the process of attempting to make this repair, and unfortunately I destroyed all of the components soldered to this part of the board. I am making this guide in the hopes that nobody repeats this mistake. However, if it does happen, functionality can still be restored, 
by removing the destroyed components and soldering directly to the pads. One thing worth noting is that in this image, I have actually made a mistake by soldering directly to the bottom section of the DC power in. Unfortunately, with the resistor removed, the bottom section is actually just going to ground and does not go anywhere. So instead, you'll want to make a solder that connects the red wire to both of these points. The other wires should, however, still be attached to the bottom and left side of the pads, respectively. If you have tried and failed so many times that unfortunately you have destroyed the pads for these connections, there is still hope to restore functionality to the board, as these two points here, you can find by following the traces, can be wired to as well by taking a small metal implement like a screwdriver, a nail, or a knife, and very gently scraping away the protective coating until some copper is revealed and soldering directly there. These are alternative attachment points. Here's what that would look like. I do wish that I could help if your model of tablet is not the Intuos Pro Medium PTH651. I can only speak from my own personal experience fixing my tablet, but these wiring diagrams should allow you to perform similar repairs and hard wiring on different types of tablets. Once you have made a repair, I highly recommend that you layer some electrical tape over top of the solder to prevent it from moving or having any stress, and then utilizing some hot glue or some other form of epoxy to create a rigid structure to prevent the wires from flexing back and forth within the board. You can see here that I've just uh, created a, a column of hot glue which I've wrapped up in electrical tape. I have seen pictures of people putting hot glue directly onto the circuit board. In theory, this would certainly reinforce the connections and prevent them from flexing. However, I do feel that that would be very difficult to remove if you needed to do further repairs for any reason, so I wouldn't personally recommend that. As I've mentioned before, I am not an engineer and I have no prior soldering experience. As a result, my first attempts at soldering were extremely messy and uh, caused all kinds of problems and shorts and damaged the board. If I might recommend a singular piece of advice, there is a concept in soldering known as pre-tinning. Soldering likes to attach itself to solder more than anything else. And bearing that in mind, if you add solder to the wires in advance, you should be able to simply position the wires in place over top of where they should be connected and touch the tip of the soldering iron onto there, fusing the two together. This should allow you to connect them very easily and very cleanly, and you should not have the same problems that I did. This is all I have to say on the subject of repairing the tablet. I wish you good luck, and I hope this will help you to restore functionality and extend the lifespan of your tablet.